Welcome, everybody. Welcome again to 2021 Summer Reading Program. And we're so excited to have you with us again. Of course, we're doing it virtually like we did last summer, but we're so excited that we can present this program to you. And we're so excited that you're watching. So, okay. Uh, Somebody down there wants to get out of his box. Okay, at least I'm not gonna have to wake him up today. Okay, oh my gosh, okay, Panda. Whoa, here's Panda Bear. He's so excited to be back with his boys and girls. He misses you so much, Mwah! he's throwing you kisses. Yay, okay. Let's sing our welcome song. Welcome, welcome everyone. Now you're here, we'll have some fun. First we'll clap our hands just so, then we'll stretch and touch our toes. Welcome, welcome everyone. Now you're here, we'll have some fun. Fun! Okay! Hi, Panda! How come you have your binoculars? Well, one reason is, you know, Panda is still looking out, looking for the boys and girls, even though I tell him that, you know, the boys and girls aren't sitting with us yet, but they're watching us from home or somewhere else. I know, Panda, you didn't see any boys and girls. I know, it's okay. Well, he also has these because he's ready for an adventure. But I keep telling him, all you really need for an adventure is your library card. Right, Panda? Panda knows that. Okay. Well, we usually, and what we have done, is sing Where is Thumpkin? But we're going to change it up a little bit this summer because reading colors your world. So we're going to use colors instead of fingers. So I'm going to start this way. Where is yellow? Where is yellow? <gasps> there you are. There you are. If you're wearing yellow today, stand up. How are you today? Oh, I'm glad you're super well. And we're glad you're here. We're glad you're here. Where is red? So if you were here, you could help me find the colors. Here I am. Here I am. How are you today, red? Well, if you're wearing red, stand up. How are you today? Fabulous. We're so glad you're here. Where is orange? Where is orange? Ah, here I am. Here I am. If you're wearing orange, stand up. How are you today? Oh, I'm glad you're happy to be here. Where is green? Where is green? Ah, here I am. Here I am. If you're wearing green, stand up. How are you today? Oh, I'm so glad. Where is purple? Where is purple? Here I am. Here I am. If you're wearing purple, stand up. How are you today? Oh, wow, you're super fantastic. That is wonderful. Where is pink? Where is pink? Here I am, here I am. If you're wearing pink, stand up. How are you today? <gasps> Super happy? Well, good. Where is blue, where is blue? Here I am, here I am. If you're wearing blue today, stand up. How are you today? Oh, I'm so glad. Where is white? Where is white? Here I am. If you're wearing white, you just stand up. Yeah, we're so glad. You're, how are you today? Oh, we're glad.
glad to hear that. Where is black? Where is black? Here I am. Here I am. If you're wearing something black, stand up. How are you today? Awesomely wonderful. Ah, we're glad you're here. Where is brown? Where is brown? Here I am. Here I am. If you're wearing brown, stand up. How are you today? Awesome. We're so glad. We're so glad. The colors and I and Panda are so glad you're here with us today. We'll do our other little part two that we've been doing. Where are the boys? Where are the boys? There you are. There you are. How are you today, boys? Oh, glad to be here. We are too. We're glad you're here. We're glad you're here. Where are the girls? Where are the girls? There you are. There you are. How are you today, girls? Wow, absolutely wonderful, fantastic. Ah, we're glad you're here. We're glad you're here. Okay, Panda and I have picked out some books for you today. And we picked out some books about animals because it occurred to me and Panda that when you read about animals, sometimes it makes you think about them differently or you learn something you didn't know. Does that color your world? Absolutely! Okay, the first book that I'm going to read today, I'm gonna to move these out of the way, is called Sweet Pea and Friends, A Farm for Maisie. And this book is actually based on a true story. So, Sweet Pea and Friends, A Farm for Maisie by John and Jennifer Churchman. This is Maisie. Maisie Grace looked out at the swirling snow. Today, she would be going to her new home, a farm, and a family of her very own. At Moonrise Farm, all the animals were so excited to meet the new puppy. Sweet Pea stuck her head out the barn window. Oh, she's here! That's Sweet Pea. That one I think is Sweet Pea. She's here, I can see her! She cried joyfully. Farmer John introduced little Maisie and Laddie greeted the black and white puppy with a curious sniff. Laddie, Farmer John said, you will be responsible for showing her around the farm. Laddie felt very proud that the farmer trusted him so much. Now Maisie cautiously reached out and touched Sweet Pea's nose. She had never met a sheep before. We're so happy you're here, Sweet Pea said with a smile. Oh, Maisie was glad to have a new friend. Sire and Quinn, the farmhouse dogs, suggested, there they are, suggested Maisie come on their morning run. Call to Laddie if you can't keep up, Sweet Pea told her as the dogs took off for the woods. Oh, I can do it, barked Maisie. Maisie ran as fast as her little legs would go, but she could not keep up with Laddie and the older dogs. Oh, she soon grew tired. Her paws were wet and cold. She sat on the side of the trail, her lip trembling. She wanted to go everywhere the big dogs went. Then, oh, she saw Laddie bounding through the snow. He was coming back for her. Oh, Maisie breathed a sigh of relief. Don't worry, said Laddie. I'll ask Farmer John to give you a ride. Farmer John picked up Maisie and held her close. Would you like to help with the farm chores, little one? Oh, Maisie soon felt much better. Everyone on the farm has a special job, 
Laddie explained. First, they would visit the paddock to feed Sadie the pony. There's Sadie. What is Sadie's job? Maisie asked. Sadie pulls supplies in her pony cart from here to there and back again, helping Farmer John, said Laddie. Maisie wasn't sure she could pull a cart, but she wanted to have a job too. Next, they stopped to feed the sheep. Maisie saw her new friend, Sweet Pea, standing nearby, smiling. Do the sheep have jobs on the farm? Mamie asked Laddie. Of course, he said. Sweet Pea and all the sheep keep the farm fields healthy by eating the grass. And they have soft wool, which is spun into beautiful yarn to make blankets, hats, mittens, sweaters, and even toys. Oh, being able to make warm and wonderful things sounded magical to Maisie. She wanted to do something just as special. Next, they headed to the hen house to feed grain to the chickens, ducks, and turkeys. They all lay eggs, said Laddie. Some eggs are sold at the market, and some are used in the farmhouse for cooking. Maisie was sure she could not lay an egg. As she admired all the pretty colors, she wondered what she would be able to do. What was all that noise? Well, Maisie saw the geese flapping their wings and honking loudly. They were making quite a racket. What was going on? The geese guard the chickens, ducks, and turkeys from the forest fox who likes to eat their eggs said Laddie. Oh, said Maisie seriously. That sounded like a very important job. She liked the idea of guarding and protecting. Maybe she could help the geese. It was almost time for dinner. With all the chores done, Maisie and Laddie headed back to the farmhouse. While Farmer Jennifer gave her a bath, Maisie was lost in thought. What would her farm job be? As she and little Finn, the lamb, nibbled their dinner in the warm farmhouse kitchen, she wondered some more. As she settled by the fireplace, Maisie thought back on her day. The sheep have wool for yarn and keep the pastures beautiful, she remembered. The chicken, ducks, and turkeys lay eggs and the geese protect them from the fox. Sadie the pony pulls the cart, and I can't do any of those things. Maisie began to worry. This was her new home, and she wanted to belong. Laddie, she asked shyly, will I have a job someday? Oh, yes, said Laddie kindly. We are sheepdogs, Maisie. Soon, we'll have one of the most important jobs of all. As winter turned to spring, Maisie watched how Laddie took care of the sheep. He herded them to the pastures in the morning and brought them back to the warm barn at night. He helped Farmer John separate them into pens for shearing, hoof clipping, and checkups. Laddie made sure the sheep were always safe and let Farmer John know if something was wrong. He took his job of guiding and protecting his flock very seriously, and he was a wonderful teacher to Maisie. The more Maisie learned about being a sheepdog, the more she loved it. While in the barn, late one afternoon, Maisie heard a strange sound. Her ears perked up and the lip of her tail began to tingle. It sounded like a lamb crying. <gasps> Maisie found the youngest lamb, Atticus, with his hoof stuck in the hay feeder. He was alone and scared. Don't worry, Atticus, I'll get help, she reassured him, and ran as fast as she could to get Farmer John. Farmer John lifted Atticus from the feeder. 
Well done, Maisie, he said. I think you are ready for a flock of your own. A flock of my own? Maisie beamed. <clears throat> Over the spring, Maisie started to care for her four little lambs, Atticus, Hazel, Meadow, and Finn, all by herself. She loved being a sheepdog. To her, it was the best job of all. Each night, as Maisie snuggled into bed, she felt thankful. She had a farm and a family, new friends, and an important job of her very own. She fell asleep happily, dreaming of her little lambs and counting them. Now, you've heard of people counting sheep before they go to sleep. She counted one, two, three, and she fell asleep. Good night, Maisie Grace. Okay, and this is a true story about Maisie Grace and life at Moonrise Farm. Okay, well that was, I really like this book because of the beautiful pictures and it really gave me something to think about farm animals. So now I'm going to read you about another animal that wants a job an animal that's a pet. So this one is Sally Gets a Job by Stephen Hunek. It's a lucky dog that has a family. And it's a lucky family that has a dog. There they go, off to work and school. I wish I could go too. Maybe I should get a job. I would love to be the school bus driver. Better yet, I could be a teacher. Obedience class. A zoo might be a great place to work. I could feed the elephants, but cleaning up afterward may be harder than I think. You see why? <laughs> Some dogs make great guards, but I don't think it's for me. Though being a lifeguard sounds like fun. I like to dig in the sand. Maybe I could be an archeologist. Or maybe I should just focus on bones and become a paleontologist. I also love playing ball. Maybe I could turn pro. I like people and people like me. Maybe I should run for president. Though I have never seen one, I think it would be fun to be a hip hop star. Studying nature is a lot of fun. Nothing about it bugs me. Every time I visit the pond, I get frogs on the brain. Looks like on his head, too. Maybe I should be a biologist. I could become a rescue dog and rescue cats from trees, or even burning buildings. What a hero I would be. Farming might be good. I would get to drive a tractor and making maple syrup in the early spring would be really yummy. I could become a chef and open a fine restaurant. It would be a lot of work cooking and cleaning, but washing the dishes would be tasty. I am very psychic. I can always tell when my family is about to arrive. Oh, I'm so happy they're home. I realize now I have the best job in the world, taking care of my family. Okay. Those were some stories about animals and their jobs. And now we're gonna go over to the flannel board for a little story poem over there. Well, now I have a little poem. 
final board story about fireflies. And probably in the summer, if you go out at night, you will see fireflies. And sometimes, when I was a little girl, we liked to catch them. And we would just get just a jar from the kitchen, empty of course, to put the fireflies in when we caught them. So, here we go. We'll leave that right there. And let's count these fireflies as I put them up. One. Oops, upside down. Two. Three. Four. And five. All right, you can count with me. Five little fireflies flying through the night, blinking and twinkling like little night lights. Five shining fireflies flew by a door. One was caught. Up. And then there were one, two, three, four. Four little fireflies flying through the night blinking and twinkling like little night lights. Four shining fireflies flew by a tree. <gasps> One was caught. And then there were one, two, three. Three little fireflies flying through the night, blinking and twinkling like little night lights. Three shining fireflies landed on my shoe, <gasps> one was caught, and then there were two. Two little fireflies flying through the night, blinking and twinkling like little night lights. Two shining fireflies having lots of fun, one was caught, and then there was one. One little firefly flying through the night, blinking and twinkling like a little night light. One shining firefly, playing all alone. She was caught and then there were none. Ah, oh, no little fireflies flying through the night. No blinking and twinkling like little night lights. Come, have a look. Here they are, blinking and twinkling inside a jar. Well, open the jar and let them fly away. Oh, there they go. One, two, three, four, five. Blinking and twinkling like little night lights. Wave goodbye as we say good night. Okay, I hope you have a chance to look for some fireflies this summer. And now we have one more story. Well, I have one last story. We had a story about animals on the farm and what kind of jobs they do and an animal as a pet and what kind of job he does. Well. This is a book about jobs at the zoo. Not what the animals do, but what somebody who works at a zoo would do. And I was surprised. See what you, what do you do if you work at the zoo? By Steve Jenkins and Robin Page. Well, what do you do if you work at the zoo? You'll be a zookeeper, a person who takes care of the animals. You'll feed your animals, of course, and do your best to make sure they stay healthy and safe. But zookeepers also have more unusual responsibilities. You might find yourself playing games with a monkey, imitating a vulture, weighing a snake, even tickling a tapper. Here are a few of the surprising things you might do if you decided to work at the zoo. You might cuddle a joey. Hmm, you might not know what a joey is. A mother kangaroo keeps her baby. It's 
called a joey, safe in her pouch on her belly. But this joey doesn't have a mother. So for the next six months, you'll be carrying it in your own pouch made of cloth. Or you might impersonate a vulture. This king vulture is being raised in a zoo, but when it is old enough, it will be released into the wild. To keep it be from becoming too attached to a human, you should feed it with a hand puppet that looks like an adult vulture. Well, you might count a colony. Checking off the numbers on your pad, it's important to keep track of all the animals in a zoo. Making a regular count of these Humboldt penguins will ensure that none of them are missing or sick. You might rub an aardvark's ears. At home in Africa, aardvarks are nighttime creatures. But in a zoo, they are often active during the day. So you'll need to slather sunscreen onto the aardvark's sensitive ears to keep them from getting sunburned. You might shine a tortoise's shell. What? Polishing this Galapagos tortoise's shell keeps it from drying out and cracking. And the tortoise seems to enjoy the attention. Oh my goodness, this is a silly one. Give an elephant a pedicure? An elephant living in the zoo doesn't walk miles every day like its wild cousins. So its toenails don't get worn down. The, this elephant is trained to hold up his feet one at a time so you can file down its toenails. That would be an interesting job. But what about this? Brush a hippo's teeth. A wild hippopotamus feeds on grass and water plants that don't get stuck in its teeth. But the fruits and vegetables it eats in the zoo can get trapped and give the hippo cavities. So you'll need to give its huge tusks a regular brushing. Puzzle a meerkat. Well, why hide a meerkat snack? Well, because it's not always easy for a wild animal to find food. When you give this meerkat a puzzle, like this one, it has to figure out which tube has a treat inside, you'll be encouraging its natural behavior. And then you might warm up the meerkat because in Africa, meerkats like to bake in the sun. When it's cold outside, you can help them stay toasty by turning on an infrared lamp. Would you like to serenade a seal? If you're a musician, try playing a tune for a seal the music seems to calm it down, or tickle a tapper. A wild tapper rubs its body against a tree to remove ticks and other parasites. In a zoo, it doesn't have to worry about parasites, but it likes a good rub, and it seems to enjoy gentle scratching with a rake. Would you like to train a dragon? How do you get a dangerous giant lizard to climb into its cage so a vet can give it a checkup? Trained it to pursue a red ball on a stick to get a reward. When the Komodo dragon follows the ball into its cage, give it a dead rat. Ugh. What a treat. Would you like to bottle feed a giraffe or a manatee? This little giraffe's mother is sick and can't nurse her baby. So you'll need to give the calf a bottle of milk every few hours. It just might decide that you're its mother. Well, a hurricane separated this baby manatee from its mother. 
manatees are mammals and the young drink milk. You'll be feeding it by hand for the next year or so. Oh my goodness, look at that. Can you tell what that is? A snake's body. Ah, oh, there's the end of it. Well, you might have to pick up a python. Keeping track of an animal's weight is one, one way to make sure it's getting enough food. But to weigh a 350 pound snake, you'll need to recruit some friends. Entice an elephant seal? Well, how do you weigh an elephant seal? This enormous animal is happy to flop on a scale as long as you reward it with lots of yummy raw fish. Introduce a friend. Cheetah cubs usually have several brothers and sisters, but this cheetah was born alone, and it seems to be lonely. Try introducing it to a new playmate, a golden retriever puppy. Oh, so we learned, or I especially learned interesting things about lots of animals at the zoo and the care they need. So maybe that will give you something to think about the next time you go to a zoo. And the next time you go to a farm, and maybe you'll look at your own pets and wonder what they're thinking. So remember, reading colors your world, and I'll see you next week. Bye.